Uh, we're getting brand new details in from President Biden that I want to start off with this morning on your Wednesday uh, on how he might limit illegal immigration. President Biden hinting he might limit how many immigrants are able to claim asylum. He would do so through executive action and would likely have to invoke a section that even President Donald Trump used to limit immigration. In an interview with Univision, he says he's going to lean into that idea. Take a listen. When the border has over five, 500,000 people, 5,000 people a day mm -hmm. trying to cross the border because you can't manage it, slow it up. There's no, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some have suggested I should just go ahead and try it. And if I get shut down by the court, I get shut down by the court. But we're trying to work that work through that right now. Axios reports that nothing is final, but if an executive order was to come down, it would likely be by the end of the month. According to Customs and Border Patrol, there were more than 189,000 encounters along the southern border just in March alone. Let's talk more about this now with Congresswoman Laurel Lee, Republican from Florida, who's a member of the House Homeland Security Committee. Uh, Congresswoman, thanks as always for being with me. Just your response to th this breaking news that we're just getting in, that he hints at planning to limit border crossings. What do you make of it? And do you believe it? Well, there are a number of important things there. Uh, first off, it's important for us to remember that President Biden has the tools right now to stop this crisis. Uh, he, as soon as he got into office, started undoing the policies from the Trump administration that we know were working, uh, things like remain in Mexico, proper use of parole authority. And instead, this administration has been subverting the actual laws on the books that are designed to keep our border secure. So does he have the ability to right now change his direction, change course, and start doing work to secure the border? Absolutely he does. And that starts with simply following the laws that we have on the books. So, uh, you know, certainly I think at this point, all of America recognizes that this is a crisis and it's something that we need to fix. Uh, but to but to act like he's coming to this conclusion now uh, really just belies how obvious it's been all along that this was an unnecessary and avoidable situation for us to be in. And so what do you uh, make of the timing, too? I mean, if he's had this tool in his toolbox, now it's seven months to November. What, what are you making on timing? Well, just exactly that, that at this point, America has seen what a crisis this is. We're feeling it in communities across the country. And, and I believe that's exactly what this is, is a recognition that this has been a catastrophe, a failed policy agenda, uh, and that it's extraordinarily unpopular with Americans across party lines. Everyone wants this lawlessness to stop. And that's what I believe this is, is too little, too late attempt to salvage what is a catastrophic political issue uh, for the Biden administration and for Democrats right now. And an acknowledgement that the policies that were in place during the Trump administration were effective and the things that we need to be doing to make sure that our country is kept safe. Congressman, I also wanted your take uh, on Alejandro Mayorkas right now. House Republicans are now delaying the transfer of those impeachment articles against Secretary Mayorkas to the Senate until next week, until Monday. We know senators scheduled to fly back home for the weekend on Thursday. Um, so Speaker Johnson didn't want this to be rushed. But is this delay a setback and Republicans push to hold him accountable, you think? It is not a setback. My understanding is this is simply one that is related to schedule. The important thing on the impeachment is that the House has done its job. We reviewed all of the evidence. We had hearing after hearing to make sure that we got the facts. Uh, we've now proceeded with our vote. And it's time for the Senate to do its job. The Senate has a constitutional responsibility to hear the evidence, to hear the facts, to allow us to make our presentation, and then to render a verdict. So the important thing is that when these articles of impeachment come to the Senate next week, that they do their constitutional duty and allow us to present our case, hear the evidence, the facts, and render that verdict. But given the balance of power in the Senate, I mean, this is almost dead on arrival, right? So, so why delay it if you're almost sure to know what the outcome is going to be, Congresswoman? Well, we absolutely put a lot of time, energy, and effort for a reason into making sure that we follow the facts, we follow the law, and we can make a case to the Senate and to the American people about why this is so much more than a policy difference. This is about Secretary Mayorkas subverting the law, breaching the public trust, uh, doing things that fundamentally made our country less safe. 
So we need the Senate to in turn do its job, let the American people hear the merits, hear the evidence, uh, and, and then everyone is responsible for how they, how they vote and what they do with this. So, you know, the House has done our part. We need the Senate to do theirs uh, and respect the role of government and our constitutional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.